Praise the Lord and God bless you. We thank God for you being with us on today. Thank God for a new day that the Lord has allowed us to see and you joining us on Midday Manor. Uh, this is Triumph Tuesday and we are continuing our look into the book of Thessalonians. Uh, starting with chapter number three. Coming right up. <laughs> Amen. God bless you for being with us again on Triumph Tuesday, Triumph Tuesday. I'm Chris Farrison from Triumph Church, Roanoke. You can contact us at the information uh, below. But today we want to look at the book of 1 Thessalonians again, continuing to look at the book, one of the first letters that we have uh, of the Apostle Paul. Uh, this to the church at Thessalonica or Thessalonica. Uh, we are going to look at uh, chapter number three and uh, hear what the word has to say there. Amen. Get this going. All right. <laughs> All right, a little trouble today. Um, but we begin reading First uh, Thessalonians chapter number three. He says, therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing uh, to be left behind at Athens alone. And we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ to establish and exhort you in your faith. That no one be moved by these afflictions for you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction just as it has come to pass. And just as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would be in vain. But now the Timothy has come to us from you and has brought us the good news of your faith and love and reported that you always remember us kindly and long to see us as we long to see you. For this reason, brothers, in, in all our distress and affliction, we have been comforted about you through our faith. For now we live if you are standing fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God? And as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints and so like we said before in the earlier uh, chapters one and two uh, we're dealing with Paul who uh, established this church in one of the first churches first letters we have but you see a a mindset that's geared toward uh, starting geared toward the initial phases. He started this church. Paul would go to these places and uh, live with them, be with them for months, years, a couple of years before he would head to another city. And so he learned the people, lived with the people, worked alongside the people. He didn't live off the people, but also made his own way. Uh, so it was it was two years is kind of an initial time frame, uh, but the word of God grew. So much so that that they could establish elders and things of that nature uh, to carry on while Paul moved on to declare the word someone else. He did the work of an apostle, uh, which is to break ground in the territories and to uh, see new things. But his his concern in this was was after he had left, he was. Uh, writing back to see that the church was still doing well, still growing. A lot of times you can start something, but it'll fall off. But he, he heard from Timothy and heard the good report uh, that the church was alive and well and that they desired to see him again. He desired to see them. And uh, it was just a case of uh, an apostle, a father, uh, an originator, um, caring for the people that that he had led into the Lord. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and go in chapter number four, where he says, finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk 
and to please God just as you are doing, then you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, uh, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more. And to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who do not have hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we are who are alive and who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead will rise first. Then we who are alive who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. And so we see two parts in this chapter. Uh, he's, he's talking about his love for them in chapter three and wanting to be with them and see them. Thank God for their love, that they will love more and more. But then he goes on to some core issues that a lot of people <clears throat> would, would, would turn away from today. And that is to live a life of holiness, to live a life free from sin. Uh, to, to be not caught up with sexual impurity. And so that is the command that still exists and is still there today, though a generation may live that does not want to abide by it. And so uh, interesting thing, he says a lot of times when uh, we deal with the gospel, we think it's all about coming to Jesus, coming to Jesus. It is coming to Jesus. But what did Paul teach them? He taught them about morality. He taught them about holiness. He taught them about loving one another. He says, as I have taught you. And so that was something that he didn't leave. He didn't leave the issue of conduct. He didn't leave on uh, the issue of how to work one toward another, how to live one toward another. That was something, even though he was establishing churches, you would think it was all about, you know, we think of evangelism is all about uh, preaching people happy so that they come and go into the water. That is it. But look what he did. He took the time to also instruct them in the way of holiness, to, took the time to also instruct them how to live in love for one another. And so he says, that's not what we were called to. And you were taught by God, amen, to uh, to not do these things. But then as a close, getting close to my time, he also talks about, um, he also talks about, um, uh, the rapture of the church. And we use the scripture a lot uh, to encourage one another um, as people are passing away. The people were concerned as to what would happen. But we always use the scripture to say the Lord himself would ascend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. But we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them uh, to meet the Lord in the uh, cloud, so should we ever be with the Lord. And so that is the truth of it. So you got to understand that a lot of what Paul was writing about in these early letters that we have is uh, the Lord is coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Live right. He's coming back. Live right. He's coming back. Obviously, that was 2,000 years ago, um, uh, close to 2,000 years ago. And so uh, around about 2050, I think, is when this was written. Uh, not 2050, 50. Uh, when this was written, but between 48, 52, I believe. Um, 
but he's telling him this. And so people were concerned about what's going on, what's going on. And so the message a lot of times was the Lord is coming back. And the message is still the Lord is coming back. But I thank God, you know, it wasn't just that. It was also living right uh, in this present world uh, so that people on the outside, that was the ministry, was that we live right so the people on the outside could see our good works and glorify God in heaven. And that's what he taught these people, taught these people. As he went from uh, the Colossians, he went from all the other places uh, to be able uh, to serve God. Amen. God bless you. We thank God for you today. We appreciate, amen, you listening on today. And we praise God for you in Jesus' name. Amen.